Hi everybody, John here. Uh, this is most likely going to be uh, the last video that I post this year. Uh, getting closer and closer to Christmas and uh, uh, I can think I'm probably only going to get busier and busier. Uh, the records I'm going to show now are um, basically yeah, the, 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 f the tail end of, of records that I've had sort of in my inbox that I haven't showed yet and haven't spoken about. Um, we'd like to show these and get them out of the way and, and you know, once I decide to keep, they shall file away. Um, I've been fortunate to be on the receiving end of two sets of uh, VCLT uh, from uh, friends on the vinyl community. Um, still working my way through those, so uh, I'll show them in New Year and talk about them. Uh, but thanks very much, you know who you are. So I'm going to show you these records. And the very final record I'm going to show on here is, is my, I think, yeah, my favourite record of this year. Um, I'll talk a bit about that when I get to it. So, first record. This is Fashion. It's their third album. Um, I believe the first two albums, they had a particular vocalist. And by the time they got to this stage of their career, um, they had a new vocalist. Uh, they sort of started off as sort of a post-punk band, but they sort of morphed into a, a new romantic band along the lines of Duran Duran. Um, I remember when I started college and did the foundation class, I hooked up with a couple of guys that were in a band, and they were as much into Duran Duran as I was. And uh, I remember them talking about how there was a band and this was before the internet, don't forget. There was a band called Fashion that they were aware of that had a, a really good song um, that they planned to cover one day, um, you know, if they get a record deal. And um, it will, if it's done by, they were basically saying, if it's done by somebody else other than this band, um, there's a good chance it could, you know, become a good hit. Um, I've often wondered what that, what that track was, what the single was. Um, I don't know if it's off this album or off the, uh, the earlier two albums, but uh, well, we'll see. I'll have to keep on listening to it. The next record I'm going to show you is this. This is uh, Jumping Jack Flash by Aretha Franklin, uh, produced by Keith Richards, um, engineered by Steve Lee White. It's pretty nasty, pretty awful. It's only a 12 inch. Um, Probably not one I'm going to keep, I don't know. I wouldn't recommend it. Interestingly, the, I, mean, I think it came out in 86. Um, and you can see by looking here, like the, the early days of desktop publishing, um, how horrendously Keith Richards and Aretha are sort of cut out from a photograph and put on this coloured background. Nasty. It says it all, really. I wouldn't recommend that record. Um, so, here, I struck gold here, for me anyway, Duran Duran. Here we've got a Duran Duran picture disc. Picked this up in a charity shop. Um, it's an interview picture disc, limited edition. Made in England. Now, on, there's Simon Le Bon. On the back, uh, is uh, Nick Rhodes, the keyboard player, looking very effeminate. An interesting story about Nick Rhodes, he's, he's mentioned um, quite a few times apparently in Andy Warhol's diaries. Andy Warhol kept the diary and when Duran Duran were sort of, you know, <clears throat> really big, they used to pop around and see Andy Warhol and hang out in his lair. And he always used to invite them to come back, which of course they did. Um, turned out from <laughs> what he wrote in his diaries, is that he spent most of the time trying to work out if Nick Rhodes um, was uh, uh, playing for the other team, because apparently he quite fancied it. Um, with all this makeup he's wearing, you could assume there yeah, maybe he was, but you know, Nick Rhodes has always been married to sort of you know, supermodels and things like that. Um, so, here I've got a record I picked up uh, for a pound called Missouri um, Voodoo, in Voodoo Rama. 
Um, they're a German band. Uh, quite like the look of this record cover. Um, it's an unusual mix. Um, styles here. Quite interesting. I, I'm a bit undecided about it. I like it, but I'm wondering if other people might like it more than I do. Um, and I picked this up at the same time as I found a bunch of 12 inch singles um, that come from other countries on the continent. I just assume that they all come together in the same batch to the charity shop. Anyway, yeah, Missouri. I'll do a little needle book for that. this uh, record to show in uh, the middle of the stack hoping that it will make a good uh, thumbnail um, Persona 4 Arena original arranged soundtrack another you know one pound find um, found this in a record uh, sorry in a charity shop that seldom has any records I always check in there just in case um, and they nearly never ever have anything um, but this particular occasion I saw this on the shelf and uh, yeah, grabbed it for a pound. A uh, little call out to uh, Chris Profi. Chris Profi just did a, uh, a video just recently talking about uh, his uh, most valuable records according to um, Discogs. Um, quite an interesting idea. Um, <laughs> Chris, I would probably say that this is certainly my, one of my most uh, valuable records and I don't even know what it is to be honest with you. I checked this up just now um, and there's one of these available on Discogs and it's priced at 300 USD or about 125 uh, British pounds. So really what it is, it, it's part of a package that was issued as a part of a sort of a a video game thing. I don't really know much about that sort of thing. Here's the inner sleeves. Oh, yellow vinyl. Um, very nice, vibrant inner sleeve. Very thick card. Uh, so it came as part of a package with a DVD and a CD, I think. And I think this is just basically the soundtrack music to the video game. I'm not really sure. There's six tracks on it. Um, and what's weird about this is that there's no indication on it what speed it should be played. So I don't know if I'm playing it too fast or too slow. I'll do a drop, I need a drop of this as well just to see how it sounds. Yeah, I mean, it's nothing, you know, nothing I'm gonna keep. I'm, I'm not really one for selling records or flipping them or anything like that, but uh, uh, we'll see. Uh, might just keep it just for uh, amusement. <laughs>
this year was this. This is the Ruddles. I'd often seen this about and, and references to it, but I never really understood what it was for, what it is. Um, assumed it was some kind of a, you know, a parody record. And um, I picked this up for a pound. And, uh, yeah, in really good shape. And uh, I haven't even listened to it yet, but reading up about it, it's it's some sort of a, a Monty Python style parody. I think it's even got uh, what's his name, this guy here, Eric Idle, in it. <laughs> so yeah, like I said, I haven't listened to it yet. I guess you have to be in the right frame of mind, don't you, for that sort of thing. Um, so this record was one I picked up in Sweden when I went there, at the same time as I picked up the uh, the Tin Machine record that I showed in my last video. Um, so it's, it's a, a compilation record from Sweden uh, called Ferdals the Rock, which translates pretty much to rock from the suburbs. Um, it's the second album of a set of two I think there was one released a couple of years before this and this is apparently its successor um, it's a sort of a mix of um, local bands from a band from a place or yeah, made in a place uh, called Yerfella which is a suburb of Stockholm I've got a friend that lives there um, and uh, yeah the band's all sort of fairly classic rock heavy metal and a bit of punk mixed in here as well um, and I wonder what all these all these bands or the people who are in the bands what they're doing now um, but I'm, I'm not sure if this was part of the the music movement in in Sweden that happened there was a move, movement I think it was more associated with the 70s but it could have been the 80s too um, what they called the progressive progressive rock or progressive pop movement um, in Sweden which was as I understand, basically a, uh, a struggle and a rebellion against the fact that ABBA was sort of dominating the airwaves in Sweden and a lot of the glass, grassroots bands were just not getting any attention. I think that's what it's about. Um, anyone that knows anything about this, um, I've asked Jürgen once to, if he would talk about it, but he said he's not really his thing, so it would be better people to talk about it. Um, so any other Swedes out there that may know about that, uh, please admit it. There's not an awful lot of information about this record on the internet, so uh, yeah, I'll give you a little flavour of how it sounds. my birthday and I had a bunch of uh, cash in my pocket 
I'd gotten from my uh, parents for my birthday and I popped into a record shop while I was in this town. I went over for a meeting um, and uh, there was a copy of, in this particular record shop, a copy of the 666 album, um, Demis Roussos and uh, Vangelis. And I thought, oh, I'd love to get that. And they were asking three, 30 pounds for it. I was about to say 300 kroner then. Uh, 30 pounds they were asking for it. And I really wanted to get it because it's quite a rare record. You don't see it around very often. And I thought, well, I could get that. I've got this money in my pocket for my birthday. And then there was this one <laughs> in the sort of the, the pound box by the door. Why do so many people keep dogs when so few people keep monkeys and almost nobody keeps a pig in the house? Even though the pig is a very clean animal and can be house trained, which is more than can be said for most cats. Yet so many people keep dogs. Why? Well, curiously enough, the answer to that question has changed completely quite recently. From just uh, about. I'm coming in and hurrying. Can I get that? Shall I not? Can I get it? Shall I not? Um, I, I decided to get this one with the idea that, well, I'm going to come back for another meeting in this particular town very soon. If that uh, 666 album is still there, I'll grab it when I come back. Sadly, it turned out, yeah, <laughs> I'm not going back to that town anytime soon, so I doubt it's even there still. Uh, one of those things that you, you know, kind of live to regret. Maybe I'll see it again sometime. Um, right, so the, the last record I'm going to show you now. This is The Lilac Time. Uh, this is, for me, uh, my favourite record of the year. Um, favorite record of of, uh, of getting this year, but also the one that's sort of the favorite one of being released. Um, I've always been a huge fan of Stephen Duffy mm -hmm. and the Lilac Time. Uh, beautiful music, so underappreciated. Um, I wasn't a huge fan of their last album. It was okay. Uh, I raved about it at the time, but it didn't it didn't really didn't really work out as being quite as good as I hoped it would be. This on the other hand is really good. Um, I'm going to do, well, I'll try and do a little a play out of this. I don't know if it'll work because my experience is newly released music often gets, you know, copyright slammed. Um, but uh, it's a good record. I recommend it. Um, instrumentalist he plays you know some really unusual instruments and he makes really nice textures in the music Claire Duffy uh, a great component of the band and Stephen Duffy is just uh, oh, you don't have to look very far to find people that says he's sort of a, a genius that just doesn't get the kind of recognition that he deserves all right so uh, I'm gonna leave it there and um, wish everybody a, a Merry Christmas and uh, yeah, hope uh, hope for a prosperous new year. Thanks very much, everybody, for watching. Thanks for this year, and um, see you in the new year. Thanks. Bye. Oh, sometimes it's a happy. Sometimes it's happy, sad As the old year hits a slipway 
Was it all so bad? Oh, but when you're all together, you're still alone. Is it the present you can't get out of, or the future you can't postpone? Heretics who once slept on your floor Are singing carols at your door And they're putting up the Christmas tree They're taking down the Christmas tree The needles never stick to me It all goes by so quickly And I'm so glad you came to me And saved me from stupidity Every day is Christmas Day Ever since you came my way oh, You and your child Child, don't care.